third video of our Beauty and the Beast series. So in this one, I will show you my first belle all completed. La Belle Beauty is of course the main character of this fairy tale, more than the Beast. She's really the hero of the story. And it's maybe, it's not a total coincidence because it was written by Madame de Villeneuve. And I thought they were quite interesting things to put into perspective if we think about the author, the writer, and the hero, the character. First, it's interesting, La Belle is a very beautiful character, she's a beautiful lady, and Madame de Villeneuve herself, she was seen as someone very tall and with a very, very long nose. At least that's what we know from Louis Sebastien Mercier. I don't know exactly if what he said is true. Unfortunately, we don't have really a lot of portraits with all this lady aristocrats, unless they were very wealthy or that. Very often, we don't have a lot of portraits of them or maybe they have, they have been destroyed uh, at the end of the 18th century during the French Revolution, we don't know, but it's unfortunate, we don't have a lot of things about them. Um, so it's interesting because La Belle, of course, is the total opposite, she's just a perfect, beautiful lady with every, every qualities you can think of. She has given her a strength of mind, a very powerful character, really, a very powerful temper because she decides, of course, to take the place of her father and go to the Beast Castle and do the thing that her father was supposed to do. So it's a very brave, very brave lady uh, with a, a thirst for, for learning, for discovering, exploring, all that. We cannot totally forget that in the 18th century, all the sense had to be flattered, like the smell, the touch, the eyes, everything that you have in the castle, in the Beast Castle, everything is perfect. It's a total illusion world but also the mind, the mind has to be satisfied. So it's the reason there are a lot of rooms where she can entertain herself and there is a painting room and there is the library. And I decided to have my belle discovering the books in the library. She's a big reader and when she was living with her father because of the loss they had and they started, they started to be poor living in the countryside, she couldn't read anymore. So she's so happy to discover all these books. Unlike her sisters who are more interested in uh, superfluous things. So she's a generous character. She will do all the things to solve the problems. She tries to take advantage of all she has when she's there. Uh, she helps her father go back to his place and try to, to see how they could take the, some of the wealth of the beast that he has given to, to them to bring to their new home and to make her, the rest of her family wealthy uh, as much as she can. So it's a very generous character. And of course she will accept the beast and she will not regret it.
style is very different, of course, from the life of most of the ladies in the 18th century, even aristocrats like Madame de Villeneuve, who was a widow at 26, and maybe it was the best thing that could happen to you in the 18th century if you didn't choose your husband, which was very often the case, and then at least you could be a widow very fast and do a bit more what you want that she did afterwards. She was the partner of probably a man she loved, who was a writer. We can imagine she had uh, chosen this man. So La Belle, unlike all the ladies in the 18th century who didn't choose much of their fate, is the richer they are, the more wealthy they were, the less they could choose. It's interesting that she is going to choose ev everything. After all, she decides to go to the castle, she will decide to say yes to the beast, to spend the night with him and then afterwards to marry him. We also have in the original text of Madame de Villeneuve, La Belle Lavette, a big part about her origin, that she was not exactly the, the daughter of her father, she comes from a fairy world. And I didn't find that at all in the translation, so most of the fairy tale translated, or afterwards the adaptation of Madame le Prince de Beaumont, will end when the beast is transformed and when the marriage is happening. So, but the real text, there are many things. There are a lot of difference in all the adaptations and translations. I've seen in my own works and online. I didn't see the text as it is in French. I didn't see it. So I don't know why the translators and adaptators, the thing maybe because it's an old fairy tale, they can do what they want, remove what they want. And it's, it's a shame really because they removed a lot of things from the text I've seen. So if you have read it, very likely you have read an adaptation, which is not exactly the text. For Madame de Noy, it's a bit different. Most of the texts I've seen are, are quite close from the original, especially the translation from the late 19th. So this is my bell. She is on a sort of big baroque ladder because she's in the library and she's trying to access some books. So she has many books over here. She has La Belle et la Bête book, of course, as you can see on the cover. And inside there are two miniatures, which I painted with the beast and a castle surrounded by roses. My castle is probably not going to look totally like that, but uh, the one I'm planning to do this winter she has some vato pleats, which are specific of the middle of the 18th century, of course, I had to do that. And yes, some other books on the shelf, on the sort of uh, steps of the ladder. So this is my bell and she has also, also some yellow shoes and a quite sophisticated hair. Thank you very much for watching this third part of my Beauty and the Beast series. So Beauty La Belle will be in my Etsy shop this Wednesday, September 2, 2020. I will continue to work on this fairy tale later this winter. There's, there is a lot of uh, things I wanted to do. I wanted to work on the castle, on another bell, maybe another beast, just to complete really my series. So I'm pretty sure I will be back in this on this fairy tale this winter, maybe in January. I don't think before Christmas I will 
have the possibility to work on it but after after Christmas for sure I want to go back exploring other aspects and other scenes of this fairy tale so you will see other other characters other castle other things inspired by Beauty and the Beast later this winter for now I will leave you here I will have a lot of videos coming in September this I can promise you that I will have some Halloween videos and I will have an entire series all about the, the pieces and the scenes I'm working for the exhibition. So I will tell you all about that coming, the, uh, the exhibition which is coming in November, but I will have a video series all about the different pieces and scenes I'm uh, creating for that. So you will have a lot of things to see. I also wanted to say that the first Halloween workshop, the one which I did last year has just reopened yesterday so it's going to remain open till mid-october so if you want to join a halloween paper adventure with me you can join this one of course once and all you have forever access to the content even when the workshop will close its doors in at the end of october i will have the link just under this video if you are interested and the new Halloween workshop is coming at the end of September. So you could already start this one and then you could, if you want, continue with the new Halloween workshop which is coming. And I will of course show you all my decor, all that, a little later in September. Thank you very much for watching this video about Beauty and the Beast and about La Belle. And I hope to see you very soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss all my next videos. And you can give a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. See you very soon.